So each of you be blessed as we move now into the ministry for this Tuesday night on the August the 23rd. God bless you. God keep you. And again, we honor our pastor, Pastor Lois Antoine, Prayer Chinches Things Ministries, and to the LEPC family, and to our extended family on the conference line, and you that are on Facebook Live. Tonight we greet you in the precious name of Jesus, and tonight our theme is Prayer Warriors Who Pray. Mm. Let me say that again, Prayer Warriors Who Pray. And tonight as we define a warrior, it is a noun, especially in former times, a brave or experienced soldier or fighter. And then we want you to translate that from the physical to the realm of the spirit. Those that are moving forward in the realm of prayer, prevailing to the throne of God to move on our behalf. Number two, a person engaged or experienced in warfare broadly. A person engaged in some struggle or conflict. And you and I both know tonight that if you're going to be a prayer warrior in the army of the living God, there's going to be conflict. Oh, yeah. There's oh, going yeah. to be struggle because the enemy of our souls does not want us to reach the heavenly portals and the haven of the throne of God. That's true. I need you to understand tonight what makes someone a warrior, and I need you to know if you are, then you are must be prepared with battle and the armament of God. Warriors generally are associated uh, with someone who understands that they're in a battle. And let me share that again. Someone who understands that there is a battle and there is a fight. There are two kinds of courage for a prayer warrior. One, the ability to fight to protect themselves and two, uh, to uh, move toward their goals, develop and begin in strength to accomplish what it is that they need to do in the realm of the spirit. And so tonight I want you to know we're moving now with warriors who are in the realm of the spirit yes, of God. Yes. So having a warrior spirit refers to the quality within to live with humility, passion, and courage from a place of empowerment. In other words, the empowerment of the spirit of the living God. Yeah. And so tonight I want you to know that this is a night that we need to deal with the spirit of prayer. I don't know about you, but there's so much going on in our cities. There's so much going on in our state. There's so much going on in our country and around the world that we need to gather those who now are committed to bow on their knees and cry out to a living and eternal God. And so tonight we need to deal then with the spirit of prayer. And I want you to understand tonight that this is a time for you and I to know now that the best way to reach the portals of glory, the best way now to move forward in the things of God is to move in the realm of prayer. Yes. So, I need you to hear me tonight because this is going to be very important for you that have been dedicated, for you that have been authorized, for you that have been noted with the touch of the Spirit of God, that you're going to commit yourself to pray for your family. You're going to commit yourself to pray for your community. You're going to commit yourself to pray for your state or your country. Tonight, I need you to understand that it's all about prayer. Listen to me carefully tonight. No one can read the Bible without being impressed with the large place given to prayer in its pages. From Genesis to Malachi, <clears throat> from Matthew to Revelation, is filled with the corridor of prayer. I need you to understand tonight that that's very important. In order for you to touch heaven, in order for you to reach God, it has to be, to be through the medium of prayer. 
So beginning with the conversation <clears throat> between God and Adam, and all through the Old Testament, hear me tonight, and the New Testament, there are examples of men and women who prayed. Prayer, however, is in the scripture, uh, not simply held out as a privilege, but it is a commandment from the Spirit of God. In order to reach the throne room, you must know how to pray. Scriptures tonight are found in Genesis 18 and 22. Genesis 18 and 22. 1 Samuel 12, 23. 2 Kings 19, 15. Psalms 5 and 2. Psalms 36 and 6. Jeremiah 29 and 7. Matthew 5 and 44. Matthew 26 and 41. Luke 18 and 1. Luke 21 and 36. The book of Ephesians 6, 18. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Verse 25. 1 Timothy 2 and 8. James 5, 13 through 16. You say, wow, apostle, that's a lot of references. That's a lot of scriptures. Yes, but all of these scriptures are about the spirit of prayer. And that's why tonight is important for you to understand that if we're going to reach through the portals of the atmosphere and reach to the throne of the living God, it's going to be through prayer. Ezra, in the book of Ezra, regarded prayer as more important than a band of soldiers and horsemen. In other words, he said you can have warriors with physical weapons, but that will not do you any good. You're going to need warriors who have spiritual weapons that can reach a prayer hearing God. And so we find that in the book of Ezra, chapter 8, verse 21 through 23. And then I want you to know that Jesus Christ himself regarded it as more necessary than food and sleep. According to Mark chapter 1, verse 35, Luke 6 and 12, Jesus was at many times alone. And what was he doing tonight? He was praying to his heavenly father. Many times he went into the mountains. Many times he went into the garden. And every time he went, he fell upon his knees and prevailed in the spirit of prayer. I want you to know tonight also that the apostles, Yes, the apostles that were appointed by the Lord Jesus Christ put prayer above preaching. Are you hearing me? They put prayer above preaching, according to Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. So you understand then that before you can utter a word, you need to know that you are protected by the spirit of the living God. Mm -hmm. And that is through the means of prayer. We now inquire into the nature of the problems, and the methods of prayer tonight. And I want you to understand we're going to deal with people that the Bible describes as genuine prayer warriors who knew how to prevail and get a prayer through. First of all, let's deal with the nature of prayer. That's what I said. Let's deal with the nature of prayer. Prayer may be defined as the communication of the individual with God. Are you hearing me tonight? Prayer may be defined as the communication of the individual with God. The communication may take on many forms. True prayer is characterized by, first of all, confession. Mm -hmm. Listen to me tonight. You confess, Lord, I'm not worthy. Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need you now to cleanse, to wash, to renew, to restore, so that I'm able now to rejoice and to praise and glorify your most holy name. So there are many times tonight that we're going to deal with both the Old and New Testament. In the Old Testament, for example, in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 47, in Ezra chapter 9, 9 through 10, Nehemiah 1, 2 through 11, Nehemiah 9th chapter 5 through 38, Daniel chapter 9 verses 3 to 19, prayer is also an adoration. It means now that you're going to worship, you're going to adore, you're going to glorify the one that's going to hear and answer your prayer. Now remember tonight before we get going real good, there are three ways in which the Lord is going to answer your prayer. First of all, he's going to say yes. 
or he's going to say no, or he's going to say wait. In any case, you now must set yourself toward the goal of being obedient to the things that God is trying to take us through, through the rim of prayer. This now is a point of emphasis for us to understand. And I need you to understand tonight that many of the old saints prayed on their knees. Many prayed standing up. Many laid down prostrate on the floor. But all of them had this one purpose in mind, to reach the throne room of glory and to tell the eternal God what was going on in and around their lives. And so tonight I need you to know that we need to adore the Spirit of God. I don't know about you, but the old folks said he woke me up this morning, started me on my way, and I'm going to give him glory and give him praise. I need you to know that God agreed to converse with the Levitical high priest from above the mercy seat, the mercy seat that was in the Holy of Holies, where the throne of God and the glory of God was revealed. God chose to touch the hearts of the Levitical priests. God chose to touch the hearts of the ones who were coming in to serve him in the innermost part of the tent. And I need you to know tonight that you and I now know that that dwelling place is in our hearts and that we can reach the Spirit of God both by voice and by within our own being, giving and crying out to a very holy and a very magnificent and a very wonderful God who hears and answers our prayers. I want you to understand tonight that another form of prayer is thanksgiving. That's exactly what I said. Another form of prayer is thanksgiving, learning to give thanks for what God has already done. Right. I don't know about you today, but it's not about having a house. It's not about having a car. It's not about having a lot of money. It's about having a fellowship and relationship with the eternal God through the, his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And once you understand that you have to be thankful, my God. Hallelujah today. You have to be grateful yes. for what God is doing for you, in you, through you, and to you. This is a time now where we're going to tell the Lord, thank you. Just for waking us up this morning, starting us on our way. We had our right mind. We were able to put on the right colors. We were able to walk through our homes and go to our jobs and let the Lord know we are grateful and thankful that you woke us up this morning, that you started us on our way. And so we want to say, thank you, Lord. Then we have the song of Moses in Exodus chapter 15, verses 1 through 18. This song is a song of praise for what the Spirit of God did for the children of Israel while they were in Egypt. And when he brought them out of Egypt and brought them across the Red Sea, all the way through the wilderness, all the way to Jericho. I want you to understand tonight that each one of us need a song, not only in our prayer life, but in our life daily, you need a song of praise. And remember what the 103rd division of Psalm said, Bless the Lord, O oh my, my soul, soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. And I want you to understand tonight that this is a time now that we're going to bless and glorify the name of the Lord through the medium of prayer. Listen to me. The scriptures abound in exhortations to give thanks found in Psalms 95 and 2, Psalms 104, Ephesians 5 and 20, Philippians 4 and 6, Colossians 4 and 2. Only after glorifying God in prayer are we ready to think of ourselves. Hear me first before you ask for anything, before you request yes. anything, before you try to move the heart of God, First of all, I want you to glorify him in That's prayer. Yes. Let the Lord yes. know that had it not been for you mm. that was on my side, where would I be? Had it not been for you to protect me during the night, oh my God, assigning angels to cover us and to protect us. Had it not been for you to keep us during the day, Lord, I just want to glorify. Yes. I just want to give praise. I just want to thank you. And so tonight, 
After we do that, then there is a petition. And the petition is a request that we ask of the Lord. And again, let me share with you, he will say yes, he will say no, or he will say wait. Yes. Remember what Isaiah said, they that wait, wait upon yes, the Lord yes. shall renew their strength. Right and they shall mount up on the wings of an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Why? While you're waiting on the answer of God to give you what you need and to let you know and understand where it is that you are trying to go. And so tonight I want you to know that as you make your request, make the request that you know is right. Mm -hmm. Make the request that you know that is in the will of God. Make the request that you know is in the word of God. That's it, that's and this it. is why we need to understand tonight yes. what prayer really yes. is all about. <clears throat> so listen to me tonight. I need you to know that a supplication is the urging of our request. When you truly have a heart that is filled with humility, mm. when you truly have a mind that has been transformed by the word of God, when the body is under subjection and you know now that you're crying out to a prayer hearing God, you're giving him your supplications. And guess what? He's going to answer you in your prayer. I know what you to understand tonight that Daniel made petition and supplications to God in Daniel chapter 6, verse 11. Israel will have the spirit of supplication, and we understand that this is found in Zechariah 12 and 10. The Canaanite woman urged her request uh, and was heard speedily, according to Luke 18, 1 through 8. And I want you to understand tonight that the Spirit of God can be here, can be there, and everywhere. He doesn't have to wait to hear what you have to say. The minute you say it, he hears it. And the minute he hears it, he will give you the answer of yes, no, or wait. Mm -hmm. And what I need you to understand tonight is that it's up to you now to prevail. It's up to you now to cry to the hearing of the living God. Listen to me tonight. I need you to know that there is a relationship in the midst of prayer. What are you saying, Apostle? Here you now are moving into a place of relationship. Here you now are moving into a place of kinship. Here you now are moving in a place of fellowship. Because now you are crying out to the God that created heaven and earth. You're crying out now to the God that knows all about you. Remember on last week when I read for you Psalms 139, <clears throat> where David said, Lord, you know my down sitting. You know my uprising. You know my thoughts are far off. Mm -hmm. So all I'm going to do now is be honest and come clean. I need your help. That's it. I That's need it. you yes. to fortify. I need you to strengthen. I need you to... Build me up so that I can move forward yes. in this messed up world. And so tonight I know that you and I both need a better relationship. There's more that we can do. Amen. We can pray often. Remember the Bible says man ought to always pray and not to faint. This is a time now that you need to understand that we're in a place where everything you do and everything that is being done the enemy is trying to disrupt. The enemy is trying to corrupt. Yes. The enemy is trying to destroy. But remember this. The Bible told us in this book that what the devil comes to do is to rob, steal, and destroy. John 10.10 10, part A. But remember now that you have John 10.10 10, part B. But I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Yes. And so tonight we're praying to the God that wants us to have the abundance of life. And I'm saying abundance of life is not a big house. Abundance of life is not a fine car. Abundance of life is peace so that your heart can flow and your mind can receive <coughs> the things from the living God. So tonight, are you saying, Apostle, that we don't need a house? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the house is not that important, but the house within you 
is very important because that's where the Holy Spirit dwells. And that has to be a clean temple. Yes. That has to be a temple that's swept out on a regular basis so that the cobwebs of life can move out and the yes. blessings of God can move in. I need you to hear me tonight. We understand now that this is the value of understanding that we are reaching into the atmosphere. We're going to the heavens of heavens. As a matter of fact, we're going to the third heaven, to the very throne of the living God. And the way we're going is through prayer. Listen to me tonight. We are in a place now where we must understand that the God that we're praying to is all powerful. The God that we're praying to has all knowledge. The God that we're praying to is omnipotent. He's all powerful. He's everywhere at the same time. He's in Europe. He's in Asia. He's in Africa. And he's in America. He understands what it is you need. But you and I got to get down to the place where prayer becomes important in our lives. And so I need you to understand tonight that as we move on, hear me. Because after tonight, you will have no excuse to reach out and move in that place where you have supplication, where you have adoration, where you have praise and inspiration yes, yes, to the yes, things yes, yes. of the living God. So let's look at the method and manner of prayer. That's what I said. Let's look at the method and manner of prayer. It is clear that not all that men call prayer is true prayer. Are you hearing me tonight? Even the disciples realized their deficiency in this respect and so asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. Yeah. Luke 11 and 1. And I want you to know that our Lord uh, compliance with that request confirms the conviction of the disciples. Paul, the great apostle, expressed the same feeling when he declared that we do not know how to pray as we should, and then added, but the Spirit, ah, the Holy Ghost himself, intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words, Romans 8 and 26, what is scriptural method and manner of prayer. And I want you to understand that you need to pray the word of the living God, not what you think. Not what someone said, but you need to go deep into the word of God. Remember what the Bible said, if you ask, you shall receive. If you knock, the door will open. Are you hearing me? If you seek, you're going to find. And the Bible said that it is this method that God has given us to touch bases. Oh, my God. And to understand that we are in a place now where we have a prayer hearing God where we have a prayer answering God, where we have a God who knows what you need and when you need it. And all you have to do is what the old folk used to say, our God is an own time God. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And glory to God. So tonight, we want to do the addressee in prayer. The addressee in prayer. So scripture teaches that we are to pray to the Father, according to Nehemiah, Four and nine, John sixteen and twenty three, Acts twelve and five, First Thessalonians five and twenty three, and to the Son, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, Acts seven and fifty nine, First Corinthians one and two, Second Corinthians twelve and eight. But there is no clear indication in Scripture of prayer to the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you, mm -hmm. interceding yes, for you. Yes, so yes, you're going yes. to pray to the Father yes. in the name of the Lord Jesus on, Christ. Guys. And I want you to hear me tonight because it's important for you to understand that there is a structure, mm -hmm. there is a method, there is a plan. And when you follow the structure, when you follow the method, when you follow the plan, your prayers are going to be heard. Yes, hear yes. me tonight. So, the Bible speaks to the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And that's what keeps you moving. That's what gives you joy. That's what gives you fellowship. That's what gives you kinship with the Holy Spirit inside. Entering into the realm of prayer for us 
and making sure that our prayers are taken directly to the very throne of the living God. And so tonight, as we look to the addresses in prayer, let's look to the posture in prayer. And I want you to hear me tonight. The scriptures prescribe no particular posture. Are you hearing me? But illustrate and teach many postures. There's standing, according to Mark eleven twenty five, Luke 18 and 13, John 17 and 1, there's kneeling, mm -hmm. and you and I know about that if you're in the church of God in Christ. You know about kneeling, amen, because we were on our knees a great deal of the time because the saints, those old mothers and those old fathers knew that until we reached heaven, we were not going anywhere in our lives. And so kneeling is found in 1 Kings 8, 54, Luke 22 and 41, Acts 20 and 36, Ephesians 3 and 14 deals with kneeling in prayer. And remember tonight, speaking of kneeling, we know that John, the great apostle who wrote the book of Revelation, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and the book of John, was so much about kneeling in prayer until they said his knees moved into a peculiar shape because of the way he stayed on his knees praying for the saints. And I don't know about you today, but we have lost the art of praying on our knees. Many folk now just utter a prayer. But it's the position that you're getting into, bowing before the Lord yes. and saying to him, Lord, you can fix it. Oh, <laughs> you can settle this. Yes. You can change yes. this yes. Yes. by whatever method you have. Mm -hmm. I'm willing and able to stand and wait mm -hmm. until the blessings of the Lord come yes. Yes. in my life. Yes. Yes. So not only are we talking about kneeling tonight, but lying prostrate on the ground, which I covered earlier, Matthew 26, 39. Many times we find that the best way to do is to get right down on the floor and just cry out to a prayer hearing God. Not only lying down and prostrate, but also lying down in bed. While you're in bed, before you get up and put your feet on the floor, pray. And allow the Spirit of God to comfort, to strengthen, and to bring you into a place where you are able to meet the day and know that whatever the day brings, you are more than capable of moving in that day because you have already prayed. I need you to hear me tonight. So, lying down in bed is found in Psalms 63 and 6. And remember I told you that if it's not found in Scripture, then we don't need to allow it in our lives. Not only that, but we need to know that we are moving even with Peter when he walked on the water. <laughs> remember, he prayed, Lord, save me. Matthew 14 and 30. We, we can also pray sitting down. That's what I said. We can also pray sitting down. Remember I said there were many postures that you can take. Yes. First Kings 18 and 42. And while Jesus was hanging on the cross, come on, he come prayed. Yes, he ah, and said, Father, forgive, forgive them, them, for they know not what they do. And he also prayed and said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And so I need you to understand that all of this indicates that it is not the posture of the body that is significant, but the attitude come of on, the heart. Come on, come Lord, on, how much? Let on, me say amen, that again. Amen. Let me say that again. That it is not, are you hearing me, the posture of the body, but it is the attitude of the heart. There are, however, more indications that men either stood or kneeled when they prayed than when they approached God in some other posture. Remember the man who was praying and said, Lord, save me. Lord, heal me. Lord, fix me. He just stood, reached up, and looked up to heaven and prayed the prayer of faith. Then I want you to know tonight that there's times of prayer. We dealt, first of all, with the addresses of prayer that the scripture teaching us who we're going to address. Then we talked about the posture of prayer, whether we're kneeling, lying down, sitting down, or crying out. The important thing is to let God know that he is your source yes. and that he is the answer to everything that you need. So let's deal now with the time of prayer. The scriptures teach that we should pray always, according to Luke 18 and 1, Luke 18 and 1, Ephesians 6 and 18. 
but also that we should have stated times for prayers. Are you hearing me? You remember Daniel prayed three times a day. Mm -hmm. and we're going to deal with that later on in this subject matter tonight, that there's a time and a purpose. You just don't need to pray one time and give up. No, 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 no. Pray often and pray sincerely. That's pray right. with a mind stayed on the things yes. of God. Yes. We yes. find that this is done again. As I said, Daniel prayed three times a day, found in Daniel's chapter 6, verse 10. And over in the New Testament, the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 1. Now listen to me. Though these are all examples of the practice of others and are not precepts, hear me, they are at least indicating that the durability and regularity is about prayer. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm dealing with tonight. A time of fellowship, a time of kinship, mm -hmm. a time yes. of relationship with the almighty God yes, yes, through yes, his yes, son, yes, yes. the Lord Jesus Christ. So let us uh, therefore draw near, the Bible says, with confidence to the throne of grace. Are you hearing me tonight? That we may receive mercy and may find grace to help in times of need. Yes. Hebrews 4 and 16. And let me repeat that for significance for you to understand that what the Bible said, let us draw near mm -hmm. with confidence to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and may find grace to help mm -hmm. in times of need. Again, that's found in Hebrews 4 and 16. Thus, the Lord is available any time of day or night to receive the prayers of his children. Yes. Let me say that again. Thus, the Lord, the God of heaven and earth, the creator of all things, the maker of mankind, is available any time of the day or night to receive the prayers of his children. Now we've dealt with the time of prayer. Let's deal with the place of prayer. That's what I said. Let's deal with the place of prayer. Closely related to the times of prayer is the place of prayer. The scriptures encourage secret prayer. Mm. Ah, in the closet. Uh, away from all the disturbing elements mm -hmm. around us. Found in Matthew 6 and 6. He said, when you pray, shut the door. All right. And the God that is in secret will reward you oh, openly. Yeah. And I need you to know today that sometimes you just have to steal away. Mm. Steal away to a sacred place and fall down and just utter up the words that need to be uttered to the throne of the living God. Ah. Listen to me tonight. We have come now that there is a time when we need to even select a solitary place. A place where there's no noise. A place where where people are not active, a place where just you and God will be available for relationship and a time of fellowship. Hey, remember Jesus prayed in a desert place, Mark 1 and 35, or prayer fellowship with those who agree with us. For remember, the Bible says, uh, how can two walk together mm. except they agree? And remember now, you're not praying for to be a millionaire. You're not praying to have this or that. You're praying for relationship. Yes, You're yes. praying for fellowship. Mm -hmm. You're praying to ask the Spirit of God to have his way in your life Amen. and to give you the power over the flesh yes. to move forward in the things of the living God. Yes. So tonight, I want you to know there are also examples of prayer before the unsaved. Are you hearing me? Paul and Barnabas prayed before the rest of the prisoners mm -hmm. and even the Philippian jailer heard them and asked the question, what must I do oh, on, to be saved? Amen. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Acts 16 and 25. I want you to know that Paul prayed also before the passengers of that fateful trip to Rome when the Eurachidim, that storm, came upon the ship. And Paul said to them, except you abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. And he said, and even if the ship breaks up, glory be to God, <laughs> you can make it on broken pieces. Mm -hmm. That's found in Acts 27 and 35. What are you saying tonight? Uh, apostle, there are places you need to find to glorify 
and to give God glory and thank him for sending his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to save you and me and to bring us back into relationship to the Father's house. And sometimes we just need to tell the Lord through a lifting of hands, thank you for thinking about me. Yeah. When I was in sin, dead in trespasses, yeah. no longer able to reach heaven, you provided a way out through the blood of your son. Amen. And now all I want to do is just say thank you. Thank ah. you. Ooh, glory be to God. Thank you. And I give you praise. I give you honor for what you've done for me. And now all I want to do is to pray in every place. You can pray in your car. You can pray on the train. You can pray on the plane. Are you hearing me? Why? Because you're not praying out loud. Nobody has to hear what Amen. you're saying. You can pray within. And God who hears you will answer your prayer. And then I want you to know tonight, not only is there a place of prayer, but there's the decorum in prayer. Yes, the subject of decorum in prayer is often overlooked, but Jesus make mention of it. He taught that men should not be sad or gloomy. Are you hearing me? We should not look like we're on a fast or in fear. The decorum is to have joy in your heart and a smile on your face, knowing that whatever hell you've gone through is temporary. It's a light affliction. Yeah. For the Bible teaches us that after you have suffered a while, on, mm, after you've gone through what you're mm -hmm. going through, he said, I'm going to establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. Yeah. And so today I need you to understand, let's go back to praying. Let's go back to moving now into that place where we adore and give adoration and inspiration to the God that is blessing us. Take that sadness off your face. Stop complaining and start praising God. Thanking him that even without the rain, even without the sun, I'm still going to bless your name. Yes. Why? Because you know that I know that you're going to change things after a while. Mm. Hallelujah to God. Oh. Glory be to God. And so I want you to understand that he also told us not to use meaningless repetition. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we have people praying an hour and an hour and a half, never really giving directions, never really saying thank you, mm -hmm. never really saying I appreciate you. All it is is big words, which means nothing. I need you to understand that it's not about repetition. It's about a heartfelt answer to a prayer hearing God, Hallelujah. saying just like the little old man said, Lord, it's me again. Ah, here I am and I need help. Yes. Help in the name of Jesus. Yes. Come now and bring me to that place oh, yes, where Lord. fear Thank has to go yes. and faith comes in. So tonight it's about decorum. It's about understanding your position. It's about understanding where you are and knowing now that this now is a set place. This now is a holy place. This now is a consecrated place where I'm going to offer up the prayer of faith. Hallelujah. Hear me tonight. And then I want you to know after the decorum of prayer, it's about the condition of the heart. Mm. Oh my God. I need you to hear me tonight. I say this about the condition of the heart. The most important question as to the manner of prayer is the condition of the heart of the one that's praying. Are you hearty? Are you angry? Are you being unforgiven? Are you in a place now where this is something you're just throwing up to the Lord? Or is it a place now where you're saying, Lord, fix me. Yes. Uh, touch me. Anoint me. Give me the strength now to forgive. Give me the strength now to move into a place where I understand that though I'm hurt, it's not for a permanent situation. Mm -hmm. It's temporary yeah. because you're going to bind up the wound. You're going to pull the oil of healing up on my head. And I'm going to move forward and let God know, thank you for changing my mind. Thank you for fixing my heart. Yeah. Thank you for moving me now to a better place of understanding that this too shall pass. So tonight is the condition of the heart. Listen, uh, Jesus said, if you allow me, my words to abide in you mm. and you to abide in me. 
That's John 15 and 7. And I advise you to read that because he said, My sheep hear it, my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. Right, this is man. not the time to go off into cults. Mm -hmm. This is not the time to go off into witchcraft. This is not a time to go off into voodoo. This is not a time to try magic. This is a time to seek forgiveness and move forward in the things of God because all that other stuff is going to fade away. Yes. But the power and the anointing destroys yokes. Yes. That's through the medium of prayer. Hear me tonight. For the Bible says we need to abide in him. And this implies that we have the freedom to know that he is in control. Mm -hmm. Hear me tonight. You need to understand that he is in control. And then you need to understand those who have wronged you cannot stop you. That's right. Those who are trying to hinder you cannot hold you down. Why? Because the God that created you has given you power and authority. He says, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. And listen to me tonight. Put your feet down on the ground of faith. Mm -hmm. Put your hand up in the spirit of praise and bless God that whatever man has tried to do, it has failed. Let me remind you right quickly of Haman. Haman thought he had Mordecai under control. Mm -hmm. Haman thought he was going to destroy the Jewish race. But guess what? The spirit of prayer and fasting through Esther and Mordecai brought Haman on a loose 70 feet high and they hanged him on it. What he thought was going yeah. to be for Mordecai mm -hmm. ended up for him. Wow. And I want you to know many of your enemies that think that they have you under the spell. I need you to know that they're under the spell and you have been set free. Mm -hmm. All I need you to do is continue to pray and believe God. Ask and continue to cleanse the heart, to transform the mind, to renew you every day so that you will be able to move forward in the things of God. Are you hearing me tonight? And so let me give you now the final verses that I need you to understand so that you can move forward into the things of God. It's important for you to know that we need to take time. Hello. We need to take time to let folk know that prayer is the only method for reaching a prayer hearing God. Mm -hmm. And prayer goes beyond the celestial atmosphere into the heavenly of heavens. And God sits on his throne and he smiles and says, that's a prayer child of mine. And I'm going to answer his prayer or her prayer or their prayer. And so tonight I want you to know how can you become a prayer warrior? Hear me tonight. The answer, although the phrase, listen to me, although the phrase prayer warrior is not found in scripture, a prayer warrior is generally thought as a Christian who prays continually and effectively for others in the manner of praying taught in scripture. That's why we need prayer warriors, those that have on the clothes that of humility, those who have their minds made up that they're going to break through so others can break in. I don't know about you today, but is everyone in your family saved? Is everyone in your household on the solid rock? If not, you need to prevail in prayer until God hears and answers and saves them and deliver them from sin and shame and bring them back into righteousness. I need you to know, therefore, prayer warriors pray to the Father God, according to Matthew 6 and 9, where he said, Our Father, <laughs> which is in heaven, hallowed would be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Not what I want, Lord, it. but That's it's what it. you want. Mm -hmm. Not what I desire, but it's what you desire yeah. in me. Then in the power of the Holy Spirit, according to Ephesians 3 and 16, Jude 1 and 20. And in the same name of Jesus, the Son, who gave his life for you and me, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we're praying in your name. Yeah. We're reaching to the Heavenly Father through the throne of grace. Let our petitions be made known. Mm -hmm. And if it is thy will, mm -hmm. <laughs> If it is thy will, then let it be done. So 
to be a warrior tonight and is to engage in prayer and in spiritual battle. And that means you need on the whole armor yes, of God. Yes, According yes, to yes. the book of Ephesians chapter 6 beginning with verse 10 through 18. I need you to understand tonight that when you put on the preparation and the things of God, he's going to prevail for you and you're going to have victory in your life. Now, I need you to know that not all Christians are going to be prayer warriors. Mm -hmm. Why are you saying that, Apostle? Because there are some folk who have no sustainability. There are some folk who have no patience. There are some folk who will not prevail for an hour or two hours in prayer. That's true. They're just going to pray 10 minutes and that's it. But I need you to know that if you have been called to be a prayer warrior, time does not mean anything in your life mm -hmm. when you're reaching to the God that answers prayer. You know and I know that you said, Father, in the precious name of Jesus, first of all, cleanse me. First of all, wash me. First of all, sustain me, that I'll be able now to be a warrior in prayer, to pray for others, that they might be saved, healed, and delivered. So tonight, as prayer warriors, I want you to know that we rejoice in all things and have the spirit again of thankfulness for what God is doing in our lives and the lives of others. Isn't it marvelous when someone is saved through what you have done, through giving them the word of God, mm -hmm. showing them the prayer of God, helping them to understand that what they're going through is temporary, that if they hold on, that they can look to the hills whence cometh their help, because their help cometh from the Lord. What a glorious thing it is to be able to thank God. I'm so happy to know that I have assisted them to move forward in the things of God. I'm not taking credit. I'm just saying thank you, Lord, yes. that you've been able to help us to move now and to help others do the work of ministry. Effective prayer is indeed work. Let me say that again. Effective prayer is indeed work. This is work, this is sweat. Yes. This is moving now to the brow. Remember that great sweats and blood came through Jesus praying. Tears came through other prayer warriors. Mm -hmm. Times of effort where they stood still and they were hungry but they didn't eat. They needed to put on new clothes, but they didn't. They stayed there until the prayer was prevailing to the heart of God. And God heard them and answered that prayer. And so tonight I want you to know prayer warriors have a heart for God. Are you hearing me? Prayer warriors have a heart for prayer. Prayer warriors have a heart for the people of God and a heart for Christ's church. Knowing now that people need to be saved. And people need to be delivered. Are you hearing me today? And so you have been set aside to be a part of that answer. To go and grab a hold of the spirit of prayer. And so tonight, let me give you five powerful prayer warriors in the Bible. Mm. Remember I told you tonight that we were going to deal with people who have already succeeded. Woo, who have already shown us how to do this thing. And I need you to know that they are mentioned in the word of the living God. And so they are amazing prayer warriors in the Bible. And we will learn from their lives what it makes and what it takes to be a warrior of prayer and intercession. Hear me tonight, prayer is downright powerful. And we see countless individuals throughout the Bible who prayed and yielded amazing results in their lives and others. Imagine what the outcome would have been if Esther, are you hearing me, did not call the Jews to pray and to fast. They would have been annihilated. Mm -hmm. They would have been destroyed. I firmly believe that the outcome would have been very different. But thank God she had a mind to pray. Even in the midst of this, and I need you to hear me tonight, that she had to go before her husband, the king. And that was not protocol in that day. You had to be bitted by the king. But she said, I'm going to the king, fasting and praying. And if he receive me, wonderful. She said, but if I perish, I perish. But I want you to know that when she went, the first thing that guy did was jump up and was happy to see his wife and said to her, the half of my kingdom I will give to you. You are so beautiful. What is the 
request that you've made. And the only request she had, according to scripture, was you invited to dinner. And while you're invited, bring that young man named Haman too. And I want you to know that God had a plan. And the plan was to expose Haman and to let the king know exactly what was going down. And it was all through the medium of prayer. Now, listen to me very carefully tonight. I want you to understand that we're moving now on track. We're moving now to a place where we need to understand who these people were <laughs> and what did they do to accomplish their goals. Number one, Hannah. Let me say that again. Number one, Hannah. One woman who contended in prayer was Hannah. Yeah. She is famously known as the mother of the prophet Samuel, and he also was a judge. But her story is so much more than just being his mother. Mm -hmm. It was a time she went to the temple where others got up and left. She stayed on her knees prevailing in prayer, asking the Spirit of God for one thing, a son that would be born in her womb mm. that she could bring back and give back to God. Hallelujah. Lord have mercy. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to have to hurry on tonight because I got mm. some others I want you to hear. But here we see a woman, even when the priest in the temple thought that she was drunk yeah. and on wine. Come on, come on. Ah, but he went up and he found out that she was prevailing mm. in the realm of mm. prayer. Mm. Ah, seeking the things of God. And saying to him, if you bless me with a son, I'm going to return him to you. And I want you to know God heard her prayer. And within that year, when the priest said, by this time next year, you shall bring forth a son. And I want you to know that after his time of weaning, she brought him back to the Lord and brought him back yes. to the temple. So Hannah then made a promise to God and she kept that promise. Can I share something with you tonight? When you make a promise to God, please keep it. Please keep it. Because the promise you made was because he blessed you and transformed and changed things in your life. God is faithful and he will answer our prayers just like he answered the prayer of Hannah. Then we have the prophet and statesman Daniel. Mm -hmm. We have the prophet and statesman Daniel who was a captive. Brought to Babylon under the rule of Nebuchadnezzar. And he found out that if he kept the promise of the teaching that was given to him in Jerusalem, he would be sustained mm. and live. Mm. Can I share something with you tonight? Don't change. Amen. Keep your mind yes, staying yes, yes, on yes, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Keep your heart in preparation yes. and thank God for God. who you are and where he's brought you to. Daniel was a man to prayer. And the Bible said he prayed three times a day. Out of the window mm. toward Jerusalem, mm -hmm. he offered prayers for his people. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 9, verse 3 and 4, as I hurry, then I set my face toward the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. And I prayed to the Lord, my God, and made confession and said, O oh Lord, mm. great and awesome God who keeps his covenant and mercy with those who love him and with those who keeps his commandments. That's the prayer that Daniel prayed. Mm. That's the prayer that he uttered before the throne of God. And can I share with you that God heard him yes, and answered his yes, prayer. And the same God that heard him is the same God that will hear you. And then number three is King David. That's what I said. King David, the second king in Israel, the one who was known as the apple of God's eye, the one who was known as the shepherd, boy who slew Goliath. This was a man of prayer. King David was a warrior at heart, but not just in the physical battlefield, but also in the realm of the spirit. He was a man who prayed in every situation he encountered. Are you hearing me? He was a man who understood the power of prayer and trusted God to answer him. And we see this throughout his life and in the Psalms. Hear me tonight as I carry on. This man who sinned 
This man who broke the covenant of God knew how to get back to God yes, by did. asking him to wash him with hyssop mm. and to cleanse him and to forgive him and to strengthen him so that he could move on. And can I share with you that we know that he was saved. We know that God answered his prayer. Mm -hmm. We also know according to Ezekiel 37, 24, that he's going to be the future king in come Israel, on, in on. the future mm -hmm. that is coming up. So his prayers were answered and God heard, oh my Lord, and gave him the answer that he needed. And then I want you to know as we hurry on, we're looking at Job. That's what I said. Are you with me tonight? Job, in the end, had to pray for the miserable friends who came to comfort him, mm -hmm. but who did not. And the Bible said that in Job 42 and 8, hear me tonight, Now therefore take for yourselves seven bulls and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant Job shall pray for you, for I will accept him, lest I deal with you according to your folly because you have not spoken of me what is right as my servant Job had. Job 42 and 8. Apostle, what are you saying? Job, who could have cursed God. Job, who could have broken relationship and said, Lord, look what the Lord has done to me. Instead, lost his sons. His wife disagreed with him. All of his cattle and industry. But the thing he said, the Lord give it and the Lord taketh away, blessed be the name of the Lord. He learned what prayer was all about. Yes. And I want you to understand tonight, as we hurry on to a close, you must understand that no matter what you're going through, prayer will help you out mm. of that situation. Job was faithful, and he understood what God was doing in his life after a fashion. And many times you and I, don't understand what's going on right away, but hold on. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Can I yes, share with you tonight that help is on the way? Then I want you to know Jesus, that's what I said. Jesus was the greatest prayer warrior in scripture because he had the connection to the oh, Father's house. Right. Lord have mercy. Uh, he talked about prayer in the Gospels, and we see that he prayed a lot throughout his life and ministry, according to Mark 1 and 35. Tells us that in the morning, Jesus went to a solitary place to pray. In the evening, he went to the garden to pray. At night, he went to the mountain to pray. Lord, have mercy. According to Mark chapter 1, verse 35, hear me tonight. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. Mm. Woo. When you get up in the morning, remember, no noise, no people. Just get on your knees or stand or fall down on the floor and give God his glory. Give God his praise yes. and thank him for watching over you during the night Amen. and bringing you out into a place where he has made you whole. Amen. Listen, Jesus not only taught on prayer, but prayer and prayed as well. Yes, he lived the lifestyle of prayer. Let me say, I said Jesus, Jesus. lived the lifestyle of prayer. He woke up before daylight to meet his father and he prayed constantly. Remember the prayer that he prayed, Father, not my will. Mm. If it be your will, let this cup pass. But nevertheless, not what I think, but your will be done. I'm willing now to go through Suffer this thing that I must suffer for all of mankind, past, present, and future. For all of mankind that have dead and now those that are alive that are willing to take on the covenant that you've brought, the covenant of blood. And so he prayed and his prayers were answered. And I need you to know tonight as we get ready to close that it's now a time for you to understand that prayer is really about relationship. Prayer is really about fellowship. Prayer is really about kinship with the Father through the Son in the midst of the Holy Spirit. And so tonight, I want you to get now a place where you can repent. Get to a place now where you can seek forgiveness for not praying as you should, for not praying like you should. And ask the Lord now to fix it 
so that you can become a prayer warrior, a prayer praiser, a prayer who gives glory to God and thank him for what he's done in your life. I need you to understand tonight that this is a time now where we're going to draw aside. And let me share with you this victorious testimony about prayer. We just returned, my wife and I, from the city of Oakland for the wedding and for the ministry of preaching. And in our way, coming back in the rental car, I dropped my wallet and it went under the seat under the driver's side so that we couldn't see it. I got all the way here to Texas and discovered no wallet. But in my prayer time, I heard the Lord say, you will find it, it is well. I want you to know that I got an email this morning and the email was from Alamo Reynolds saying we found the wallet and you can receive it. And so I sent my niece to get it and she waited over an hour and a half. It looked like the devil was trying to hold it up. And again, I prayed and I prayed and I mm -hmm. called her and I said, look, in 15 minutes, go up there and tell them we want the wallet. Well, she did just what we said and in 15 minutes she went up and guess what? They had the wallet yeah. and everything that was in it. I want you to know it was because of prayer. <laughs> I want you to know because we believe God Amen. that the impossible can be obtained. Yes. That yes. you yes. and I can now move forward in the things of God. So tonight as we get ready to pray, I want you to understand now that you can move forward in the power of and in the anointing of the Holy Ghost yes. through the realm of prayer. Yes. I don't know what you need. I don't know where you're going. I don't know what it is that, that is bothering you, but I need you to release it tonight and allow the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost groaning within you, carrying these things above to the Spirit and to the throne of the living God. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, tonight we come in the spirit of prayer seeking the word of God to dwell in our hearts, to transform our minds, and to renew us in the Holy Ghost. Tonight, we ask and we repent, saying, Lord, we should have prayed more, yeah. but forgive us and allow us now to come to that place where prayer becomes important, where prayer becomes the center, where prayer becomes the theme, where we utter up words of comfort, words of faith, to believe in a prayer hearing God. Have your way tonight, oh God, upon those that are seeking help, those who need to be healed, those who need to be delivered, those who need to be set free in the precious name of Jesus. Look upon our pastor Lord's son. Continue to bless, strengthen, and keep him. Look upon the prayers of those who have made requests ah, in their hearts. Transform their minds tonight and lift them before the Lord. I'm praying now for Evangelist Solomon. I'm praying now that you would touch that body of clay in the precious name of Jesus. Heal her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Look upon Minister Diane tonight. Have your way. Touch in the name of Jesus. Wake her up in the morning refreshed in the power and the anointing of the Spirit of God. Look upon all the others that are on the line tonight. Names that I cannot even call. But you already know who they are. You know where they are. And Lord, you know their conditions. I ask in the name of Jesus that you would have your way. Prevail and touch their situations. Prevail and touch their conditions. Prevail and touch the bodies of clay. And heal in the name of Jesus. And set free. And we'll give you glory, we'll give you praise, and the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Those of you that are on the conference line, and those of you that are on the Facebook Live, I just want you to lift your hands and begin to praise God. I want you to lift your hands and begin to bless God. I want you to give him praise and thanks tonight because he heard and answered our prayers. Hallelujah! God, I give you glory. Hallelujah. I give you praise tonight. Open your mouth, open your mouth, and give him praise. Open your mouth and thank him. Hallelujah. God, I praise you tonight. Hey, you told us what to do. You told us how to do it. And Lord, you've answered. Ah, my God. Ha, bless his name. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I praise you. Hallelujah to the glory of God. Come on, saints. Come on, saints. You that are on the conference line, you that are on Facebook Live, open your mouth and begin to bless him. Open your mouth and begin to thank him because he's worthy of all our praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> glory be to God. Hallelujah. God, I praise you tonight. Ah, oh, continue to bless us, continue to touch us, continue to sustain us, ah, oh, and bring us to that place where the closeness of your word ah, is down on the inside, where the closeness of your word moves us to the place of prayer and praise. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you glory and praise. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Everybody said amen. Everybody said amen. Everybody said amen. Now clap your hands and praise him. Clap your hands and give him glory. Clap your hands and thank him. Clap your... Ah, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Glory be to God. Clap your hands and praise him. For we are now in a place of prayer. We're in a place of petition. We're in a place of supplication. We're in a place of praise. Man, God, hallelujah. Hey, glory be to God. Ah, thank you in Jesus' name. And so we give honor again to our pastor, Pastor Lois Antoine and Prayer Changes Things Ministry. And those of you that are on the line tonight, we thank God for you. God bless you. And God keep you. Now those of you that are on Facebook Live, as I always say until I talk to you again or see you in another powerful service, remember tonight is a time to offer up prayer and praise. The double P, prayer and praise to a prayer hearing God. This is Apostle Ellie Anderson saying to you, God bless you on Facebook Live. God keep you on Facebook Live. God make his face to shine upon you on Facebook Live. Amen. Amen.